Hey guys, welcome to this webinar by Sensible on how to use Option Chain to trade. Option Chain is possibly the most important data source if you are a serious futures and options trader and to trade futures or options and even the underlying stocks of these futures and options without looking at option trade is absolutely suicidal. So if you are trading direction or even if you are trading direction neutral, if you are not looking at option trade and uh, option chain to trade, you are doing something wrong. So in this extremely extremely important webinar, we will cover how to trade using option chain. So today's agenda is how to use option chain to guess direction. This is very important. So there are hidden clues on where exactly the market will turn around, how the market will go, will, will it tank or will it bounce etc in option chain. We will also look at how to avoid common mistakes by beginners who are starting to trade option chain. We will look at put call ratio which is one of the most important uh, data points in trading. We will look at max pain. We will also analyze intraday option chain and how to see the cha how the change in OI is uh, adding up to direction. And most importantly we will look at how to make some money using all this right because that's the most important thing. If you're not doing that, there's no point in any of this. All right. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So before that, let's have some very important warnings. So never use option chain alone for trading. It has to be used in combination with something. What that something is, we'll look at very soon. Option chain works only in nifty, bank nifty and big stocks with enough trading and huge open interest and all that. It works in near expiry. So let's say you are in the third week of February like you are right now. The third weekly nifty option chain works. The monthly option chain works. The third week of March does not work right now. Let's say the end of April option chain also doesn't work right now. So keep your option chain analysis towards the near weekly and near monthly and don't go too far with it because the option chain is not formed. Uh, use only liquid traded stocks and their options. So does SBI option chain work? My answer is yes. Does Ajanta Pharma option chain or Jubilant Foodworks option chain works? Maybe no, maybe yes, it's tricky. So always stick to very big stocks, very well-known stocks, very liquid heavily traded stocks. Look at how much volume is there in option chain etc before trading. Now also one very important thing. So let's say an expiry just starts, right? Let's say you are in... February expiry, the expiry is on let's say 27th or something. On 1st of ex, uh, first of February, this option chain is not very reliable. Because when does this start? When January expiry ends, right? So 1st of February is just 2-3 days after the expiry of January. So in that scenario, the option chain is very early. It's not really formed. You have to give option chain some time to mature, right? So uh, you can't look at let's say a weekly option chain on a Friday right because the expiry is on thursday there is six days to go you can probably start looking at it from monday but friday is a little too early to look at it similarly if you're looking at a month and option chain don't start looking at it from the month's beginning probably give it like a good six seven days after the start of the series before you start looking at it also the numbers have to be big <clears throat> we'll do some real life examples on that uh, so i'll just keep it with just this piece of information for now and jump right in so here's the thing this is a basic option chain which you are seeing in Sensible, right? Uh, there are some important parts here. These things which you see in the middle are the strikes of options. This is nifty, of course. This is the call option side. This is the put option side. Uh, there's a reason why call options are in red and put options are in green. We'll see that very soon. Uh, this number, this six, four and a half, six and a half, sixteen, eleven, it's called open interest. What is that thing? We'll see in this webinar. Similarly, this 5, 6.6, 13.1, etc. is the open interest. This is the open interest of the call. This is the open interest of the put. Uh, we'll understand what is op open interest in the next slide. So, What is this op open interest? See, it's very simple. If you say there is open interest or OI on a particular strike, right? It just means that there is a buyer and a seller there. So if you say that there is one open interest on Nifty 12,200 strike, it just means that somebody sold the 12,200 strike to somebody else. So if you say that Nifty 12,000 uh, call option has 100 OI, 
it just means that 100 contracts were sold and 100 were bought at that strike right nothing fancy it just means that there is trade there and there is an open contract there which has not been squared off so high oi means there are lots of contracts which are sold and bought on that strike which means let's say if there is 5 lakh oi it means that 5 lakh contracts were sold by some people and some other people bought 5 lakh oi <coughs> right 5 lakh contracts so like i said before someone has sold someone has bought that's how the oi is created so when this oi is created right we should understand what is the thought process there so when i buy let's say a 12000 nifty call from you um, you are selling a 12000 nifty call, call to me right so you are selling the call i am buying the call it means that i am betting that it will go beyond 12000 and you are betting that it will not go beyond 12000 because you are selling the call option right and i am buying the call option so option buyers are betting that whatever is the strike whether it's a call or a put the underlying instrument that is nifty or bank nifty or whatever will go there the seller is saying that it won't go there so again if let's say you sold me 12200 nifty call it means that you are thinking it won't go there right nifty won't go to 12200 from the current 12000 level similarly if i bought 11800 put from you i am saying that it will go there and you are saying that it won't go there so seller is saying it won't go there buyer is saying it will go there correct so the question is when a call is being bought a buyer is saying it will go up when a call is being sold the seller is saying it won't go up who is right right this question's answer is probably the single most important thing in understanding what option chain is all about so I'll give it a couple of minutes for you to think about who is right in this scenario. When a call option is being sold, is a seller who says it won't go up right or is a buyer who says it will go up right? Okay, let's go to that answer. So in this scenario, right, when this OI was created, that is when one contract was bought and the same contract was sold, someone is willing to sell an option and someone is buying that option. Usually the seller is someone with a lot of money big institution why because it takes margin to sell right and buyer is usually a retail investor because he is buying a cheap option paying premium now think about it this way uh, a seller usually is posting the margin it's a big institution it has a lot of money usually that person with a lot of money with a lot of margin with a lot of information etc is much more likely to be right than a retail investor who is mostly buying out of the money options, right? So institutions are usually right. Which means that the person who sells the option is who is most likely an institution is the person who is going to get it right. <clears throat> In other words, this is going to be an option seller's market. I'm just going to give it one second for you to digest it. Sellers are right, it's a seller's market. So what does that mean now? If there is a large option OI in call, it basically means that people have sold calls, they are going to get it right, which means it won't go above that level. Usually, usually, right? So I'm going to say usually to all of this because there are one or two occasions when this goes wrong, but most of the times this is how it works. And if you look at put, it is said that it won't go below that level correct so the seller is again right here and the one who sold the put who said it won't go below that level is right so let's look at an example right away so first let's see how to access option chain from zeroda so this is the kite context menu you can see option chain here also, if you look at any future, you can see an option chain here. So the option chain widget by Sensible comes up on any given uh, index, Nifty, Bank Nifty, or any uh, single stocks future or option. So this is a future, I can see option chain. So let me look at Nifty future and look at the option chain. So we have a miniature option chain here, free of cost for zero users. And you can see uh, another representation of it. These greens are put-to-wise. 
these reds are called OI. But let's just go jump into the uh, full blown uh, option chain which we have made. It's again a free feature on Sensible. So this is a full blown option chain. I'll just give it a second to load. Okay, so you can see this full blown option chain. And let's see. How it looks so you can see that all these are calls so there are sellers here who have sold calls who are saying that it won't go beyond this level there are buyers here uh, sorry there are sellers of puts here who are sold puts who are saying this won't go below this level <clears throat> and there's some truth to it right because nifty has been falling since 12,000 consistently and this morning <clears throat> yesterday morning rather it hit 11,900 and you knew how fast it bounced from that 11,900 level. <clears throat> so uh, if there is huge call, Nifty goes below from there. If there is huge put like this, Nifty goes up from there. So this is what you call a resistance. This is what you call, sorry, this is what you call a support. This is a support zone. Basically when Nifty goes there, uh, you can expect Nifty to bounce back up and this <clears throat> is a resistance zone because nifty goes down once it goes near it why because there are so many call option sellers who are betting that it won't go below level so this is a support zone where from where nifty goes up this is a resistance zone from where nifty goes down so where is the support here somewhere around 11900 where's the resistance here somewhere around this 12200 12100 that zone right <clears throat> so this is a real option chain being analyzed for 20th ex uh, <coughs> expiry so let's just understand that once again when a call option OI is created someone big is betting it won't go above that mark they are most likely right and there's a high chance the strike level will not be crossed so again in this example there's a high chance that this level will not be crossed on nifty right uh, so this is a resistance and when a put option OI is created it means someone big is betting it won't go below that mark they are also most likely right and there's a high chance that the strike level will not be crossed which means that level acts as a support so orange color bad for the market goes down from there resistance green color good for the market goes up from there support green support orange resistance this is where market is likely to go down from this is where market is likely to go up from so again an important concept to understand is that see it's not one point Right? It's not one point which is a support. This is always a zone. So if you look at it, this 12100 <coughs> to 12200 zone has high amount of call options being written. So it's not like exactly at 12200 the support resistance starts or 12100 it starts. This is a zone of resistance. Similarly, this is the zone of support. This, I mean, there's no zone really in this one because it's just this 18.8 which is major. But two, three strikes here combined put together, you can see this is a zone. When you see a huge OI in two or more close call strikes like this, this is a zone of resistance. When you see huge put OI in one or two call put strikes like this, this is a zone of support. Right? So it's never a single number. It's always a zone. So now let's look at some real example on what is real and what is not real. Let's start with Nifty. So this is Nifty weekly option. There is enough OI being created here this option chain so according to this option chain this is a sell zone this is a buy zone now let's look at nifty monthly so in nifty monthly there's a huge open interest at 12000 which kind of indicates that in monthly expiry 12000 is might act like a support right and 12200 which is a high oi this might act like a resistance so i'm not saying that it won't go below this level because anything can happen but 12000 looks like a support and 12200 seems like a resistance it can change next week but as of now this is how things are standing now let's look at uh, a counter example if you look at 5th march right this is not an option chain you should look at because if you look at the previous expiry right or the current week expiry 16 lakh 11 lakh 22 lakh 17 lakhs there are huge numbers but if you look at the 5th march expiry 0.1, 0 0.20 this is hardly any number so like we discussed before you should not look at this option chain simply because there is not enough data on this there's not enough volume on this there's no oi formed on this and this is practically 
a waste of your time and effort. The same applies to uh, March monthly contract. You can see that there is hardly any OI anywhere. 11800 has some OI, but nothing else has any OI. So we now know that you can only look at near week and near month uh, option chain and not far away option chain. Now let's look at Bank Nifty. Bank Nifty again, you can see that in near week, there's a lot of support which is happening in this zone. There's a lot of resistance in this zone. 31,000 is a huge resistance. 31,500 is a huge resistance. <clears throat> 30,000 is somewhat of a support. So basically, this is a zone of support. This is a zone of resistance. Uh, no clear winners really in Bank Nifty. Let's look at monthly options on Bank Nifty. You can see that monthly Bank Nifty does not have much open interest anywhere. 0 0.1, 0 0.3. That is hardly anything, right? So <clears throat> monthly Bank Nifty is not very reliable. Uh, 5th March Bank Nifty, there's nothing in this thing. And 26th March Bank Nifty again, this is completely Kali. So there's nothing in this thing and we might as well ignore it. Now let's take an example of a single stock, SBI. So if you look at SBI, you can see that there is open interest uh, of 45 lakh, 59 lakh, 19 lakh, the 75 lakh, 61 lakh. So this is interesting, right? SBI has been falling since 330 in this expiry series and you can see that at 137 there is call OI, at one, uh, sorry, at 320, 330 there is call OI, at 325 there is call OI, at uh, 320 there is call OI, so all this is huge call OI and the support happens at 310 zone which is comparable to this huge resistances here and the stock largely looks like it has some support at 300, some at 310 but it is very heavy on calls and there is no wonder that the stock went to 330 and fell from 330 level sharply to 310 zone. Now let's look at next month. There's hardly anything here, 9 lakh, 10 lakh. It's not comparable to the current month, right? Because in current month, you can see 75, 60. These are all significant numbers. In next month, the numbers are insignificant. And I would not look at next month uh, option chain and trade because I don't think this is real. Now let's look at 30th April. Again, there's nothing in it. It's like a, it's, it's a completely empty. So SBI has decent uh, option chain. So that's an example of an option chain with some OI. Now let's look at an option chain of a stock without any OI. Look at iShare Motors, right? 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.2. There's hardly anything in this and we, do, we should not consider option chain while trading this stock. Now let's look at something like a Maruti. Maruti has 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1.6. I mean, 1.6 etc. is okay, but it's not something significant. So this is like a average option chain with average numbers. It's not as bad as, uh, let's say, an Aisher Motors, but it's not as good as, let's say, an SBI, right? Um, let's look at some more example. Yes, Bank. Very active option chain. You can see there's a lot of uh, betting going on in the stock. There is 144 lakh, 80 lakh, 76 lakh. So, so basically, look for big numbers in this thing. And that means that the option chain is real. If you're seeing small numbers, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and all that, then this is hardly not, I mean, it's not very reliable, right? Let's look, look at one last stock and see if it's real or not. So what would you do with Apollo Hospitals? <clears throat> not a real option chain because look at this, right? I mean, probably, yeah, this zone pay, there is some OI, you know, 1 and 1.6 and all that, but this is hardly anything. It's not very reliable to look at this option chain alone and trade because there's not significant data like SBI or something where we could see like 70, 60 lakhs of contracts being written. All right. So that is some real example. Now let's also look at real examples on does this thing work or not, right? So let's look at Nifty again. So we know that Nifty had a uniform fall from 11200 levels sorry, 12200 levels to 11900 and that is very much seen in this option chain. We also know that it bounced from 11900 to 12000 yesterday, which is also evident from this option chain, right? Again, let's look at another stock which gave good move. I'm just randomly typing a stock. I don't know if it worked or not, but let's just see. Look at Tata Motors option chain, right? Tata Motors fell down from 180 odd levels to 160 odd levels. Today also it fell some 4%. Does option chain uh, tell you that data? Of course, yes. 180 pithers, 80 lakh, 175 pithers, 50 lakh, 170 pithers, 45 lakh. So <clears throat> there's a lot of proof inside option chain that this fall could have happened and you could have seen this thing coming, <clears throat> right? So 
So I'll just let me just put it this way. You can just keep on looking at this uh, option chain and see for yourself what works, what doesn't work, and all that. Uh, now let's look at uh, an important concept called PCR. Oh, there's another thing which you can do here. This is rather interesting. So this is today's option chain, right? How could you have known in the past <coughs> if it worked or not? So we have past data of option chain here. And let's look at Nifty, right? <coughs> so this is historical option chain. Look at Nifty. Uh, so let me just change it to Nifty Weekly. Right, look at Nifty Weekly. 12 to, so on 28th Jan, <coughs> which is around the time of budget, 12200 was the biggest OI. And <coughs> as you know, it fell after the budget, right? on 29th Jan and it was falling throughout that budget time. It's all uh, calls, calls, calls. There are so many red calls and there's hardly any green puts. And you know what happened during the budget day also. So you can see that it worked. Whereas if you look at 2nd of Feb, right, after the budget, you can see that puts have started picking up. On 4th of Feb, that's not 2nd of Feb, rather. On 3rd of Feb, it was still calls. But on 4th of Feb, you can see that it was all puts and the puts kept increasing and the market kept went up. Somewhere around 6th of Feb, you can see that calls again started raising their heads. And <clears throat> we have seen the market fall after that. So now it's again <clears throat> majorly, uh, uh, now it's kind of split between call and put. So now you can see that it is uh, slightly more call heavy than put heavy and we need to see how this works. So at every point, you can see this. You can also see the ratio of calls to puts here. You can see 14 million calls, 17 million puts. So it gives you some historical perspective <clears throat> into whether something worked or not, right? We'll just do one more example, SBI. On budget day, it was all calls. It was all calls, 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 all indicating a downturn. Then the puts started coming and you can see that SBI went up after that. And then it became all calls somewhere around 14th February and it fell. And now it is kind of divided between calls and puts. There's some open interest at 320 levels, but it's not as massive close by as it used to be, or let's say a week back or something, right? Two days back or something. Um, so you can keep experimenting with this. I'll just leave it at that and not go deeper. So this is put call ratio. The next concept we are learning, right? So here's an important thing, right? Do not use PCR as a, you know, kind of a golden uh, bullet. That is, don't just look at PCR and trade. See, ultimately, PCR comes from option chain. And if you have the raw data or the basic data or the fundamental, you know, first principle data of anything, you should not look at something which is derived from it. Of course, it's a shorthand to understand something. But if somebody tells you that if puts PCR is this, buy if PCR is that, sell, that's not the way to go about it at all. It is a good shorthand for you to interpret the option chain. But ultimately, if I were you, I would absolutely look at option chain first and then look at PCR. But anyway, let's look at what PCR is. Basically, PCR is the ratio of put to call, right? Put upon call. So high PCR means that the market is bullish. It means that there are more puts than calls, right? Because P by C, P is high, C is low, PCR is high. So which means that big sellers are willing to sell the puts more than they are willing to sell calls, which means they are saying market won't go down much, correct? And low PCR means bearish, right? So there are more calls than puts. Big sellers are willing to sell calls more than puts means that they are scared of market falling and they are not scared so much about market rising. So if there is high PCR, you have to think that it is a sign of more puts, which means bullish. Low PCR, it's a sign of more calls because denominator is bigger. And therefore, uh, not so much probability of rising because people are saying it will go down, right? <clears throat> but here's a catch. <clears throat> you cannot just look at PCR and trade. You always have to look at the option chain when you look at uh, PCR. And I'll explain why. So look at this option chain, right? You can see that there are calls somewhere in 12,200 zone, 12,100 zone, etc. And there are puts in this zone. Now this 
if you look at this info button, you can see that the PCR is 0.54, which means it is low, which means what does that mean? It means that people are thinking market will go down, correct? Now the problem with this entire setup is that if these calls are not around 12,200 and let's say they were on some 13,000 or something level, right? It doesn't mean anything. All that the market is saying is that the market won't cross 13,000. But 13,000 is so far, all the put calls which are being traded are OTM. So it does not have any significance at all. So PCR has significance if the <coughs> puts and calls which are created are close to ATM. Far away, it does not mean anything. So, which is why I keep saying that you should look at the option chain without really looking at options. PCR and saying that you know what PCR is high or PCR is low uh, but generally high PCR means that puts are more in number which means sellers are comfortable selling puts than selling calls this is a bullish sign but a very high PCR something like 1.3 I mean th that depends it might just mean that it is overbought and kind of may result in bearish reserve but this doesn't always happen largely a rule of thumb is that somewhere near one it's a very good zone to you know buy and low PCR means that the puts are less in number than calls. Option sellers are comfortable selling calls than putting, selling puts. And this is a bearish sign. And very low PCR is an oversold stock and might, might result in a reversal or a short term uptick. But again, if it's somewhere around the zone of uh, 0.5, you probably have to look at it as a, a bearish market. Right? Again, PCR also only works for nifty, bank nifty and big stocks. It does not work for... You know, I don't know, uh, Ujjivan Finance or something like that. Like it, it only works for high quality, large cap, blue chip stocks and indices. Now we come to this concept called Max Payne. So how do you see Max Payne? You can just click on this info button and here is Max Payne. Okay, so let's understand what is this Max Payne theory. So it's a theory, right? <clears throat> so by now you know that the market is completely rigged by sellers, probably rigged by sellers. I mean, anyway, sellers rule the roost in this market. And the sellers always win or let's say most of the time they win, right? And once in a while they lose and when they lose, they basically lose their shirt. But as long as they are there, more often than not, they are the ones who win. Right? So expiry will happen. So if the sellers are winning and if the sellers are right, then the expiry will happen at a level which favors the sellers. That is expiry will happen at a level where there is least damage to sellers. This point of expiry where the damage or the losses to sellers is the least is called max pain. So if somebody says max pain is 12,000, it basically means that if Nifty expires at 12,000, that is where sellers make least amount of loss. Whether it is call sellers or put sellers, that is where sellers make the least amount of loss. And therefore, the expiry happens near max pain strike. This is the theory, right? Now this might work, might not work. It's up to you. It's up to your belief system. At Sensible, we kind of look at Max Payne, but we don't give it too much credibility. There are a lot of people who say, Mark, it does not work in India. So probably one of the nice exercises you can do is go back in time and see if it's worked or not. But I'm not very, uh, I'm not a huge fan of Max Payne, but we show the Max Payne nevertheless in the platform because people have asked for it. Now, one last thing. Uh, if you look at this, uh, graph right this this chart this histogram rather you're saying numbers like bracket 248 bracket 1712 bracket 49 percent etc this is the change in open interest right so there is open interest and the change in open interest change in open interest is also as important as open interest itself because open interest is just a snapshot it's like the location of a car right but you also have to look at the change in OI, which tells you the momentum of the car, the speed of the car. You can't like, you can't like take a still photograph of a car and assess if it's coming towards you or not. You have to check the speed of the car, right? Um, okay, so here is one interesting meme from us. Those who understood what it means can comment on the comment section and tell us how much of physics geeks you were back in school and college. <laughs> so anyway, so... Open interest is like speed, change in open interest is like momentum. Both speed and momentum is required for us to assess the market, which is why we look at change in open interest. When OI buildup happens or OI change happens, when is it bullish? It's bullish when put to OI is increasing. What does put to OI increasing mean? People are selling puts and they are saying that, you know, I don't think it will go down. 
when is when call over is decreasing what does that mean people who have sold calls are saying ki boss i have to get out of this call market upar jane wala hai right so they are afraid that market will go up they are getting out of the call so when they get out of the call the oi will decrease when you add new contracts oi will increase when you square off the existing contracts oi will decrease so basically increase in put oi and decrease in call oi is a sign of bullishness right how about bearish if put oi is decreasing and call or call oi is increasing it's a sign of bearishness why because if put oi is de- decreasing it means that those who sold puts are getting out of the put and saying bye mujhe nikalna hai isse which means that they are afraid it will go down similarly when call oi is increasing it's somebody saying that i don't think it is going to go up chalo chalo i'll go sell some more right so increase in call oi decrease in put oi it's a sign of <coughs> bearishness so let's so now the question is how will you um, understand this so one easy way to do this is look at option chain and see the change in numbers but we made a an analyzer app for open interest alone which works somewhat like this so this shows intraday change in open interest so you can choose any given day so let's say that i want to choose february 17th what happened in february 17th february 17th was the day when market went down you can see that calls were added and puts were you know uh, taken out so decrease in put oi increase in call oi sign of bearishness that's exactly what happened on that day by the way <coughs> look at it <coughs> feb 14th again one of those negative day calls got added puts got added not so much february 13th people got out of puts and added uh, calls that again means sign of bearishness so let's look at one of those days when there was <coughs> bullish action let's say february 4th or 5th let's see what happened on 5th see there was a huge addition of put and there was a huge deletion of call what does that mean people basically were bullish again feb 4th was a <clears throat> very bullish day you can see that calls were removed puts were added so this kind of helps you figure out what happened in market in any time interval this is also if you are doing it during live markets this shows intraday oi so what it means is that let's say tomorrow is feb uh, 19th on feb 19th you can actually say what happened intraday and it will show you i mean today is feb 19 i'm recording this on midnight so basically on tomorrow which is morning feb 19th you can see that whatever is happening during the intraday will be visible here and you can actually use this to guess the direction of the market right so if call oi is getting added you know that market is probably going to go up uh, go down if put oi is getting added you know that market is going to go up if call decreases you know that market is going up if put decreases you know that market is going to go down if call increases and put decreases it's probably bad if it's the ulta it's probably good for the market so now you know a lot of combinations using this intraday option chain with which you can guess the direction of the market again don't use this alone use it with something else like some volume analysis or moving average or something but this is a very fairly reliable indicator of where the market is going especially when it comes to nifty bank nifty and couple of huge names like sbi hdfc icici actually now that i've said hdfc let's look at hdfc right hdfc corrected from around 1250 levels to 12 12 12 what sorry hdfc bank right so everybody calls hdfc bank hdfc so hdfc bank went from 1250 to 1213 levels and you can actually see that right look at the oh, look at the option chain so if you can even look at this what was happening every day it was basically call addition which happened every day feb 13th was call addition feb 12th was put addition but since feb th- mostly this series has been call addition only and you can also see that historically this has just been a game of call like call call it's always been call dominating over put for this entire series which possibly explains why hdfc fell so much so if you had this data <clears throat> the way you have traded hdfc would have been very very different right 
So this basically lets you know the change in OI historically and kind of gives you a sense of direction. Uh, so, okay, last slide of this webinar. What are the key takeaways? Option chain helps you identify support and resistance. Uh, you, it only works for nifty, bank nifty and big stocks. You have to pay attention only to large OI in a liquid stocks option chain. You have to look at large numbers, not 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. You have to look at near expiry, you have to look at liquid stocks, you have to look at big stocks. You can't use this alone, you have to combine it with some other data. Um, again, uh, I'll just give one example of the data you have to combine. It could be as elementary as, let's say, a chart. So let's say this is the chart. This HDFC is OI. This is a bearish engulfing. This is a 100 DMA. This is a 50 DMA. Open interest, 50 DMA, 100 DMA, bearish engulfing. There are four technical reasons uh, for me to short. On top of it, there is option chain also backing the data. I'll probably short, right? Similarly, if I look at Nifty, in the in the in the end of this series, in the beginning of this series, there was open interest at 11600 levels. There was 200 DMA. There was a green candle. All of this put together is giving me a sense of buying. Yesterday morning, if we look at it, right, there is open interest at 11 900 levels of puts. There's a 100 DMA, and then there's a candle which is kind of a bullish candle. All of this put together, it is giving me a reason to go bullish on this. So basically. Just look at the chart and use the open interest data to confirm or look at open interest data and look at uh, chart to confirm. Like combining these two, the kind of value you can unlock in terms of guessing direction is fairly immense, right? <clears throat> so again, uh, use in combination with charts, either use chart with open interest or open interest with chart, it doesn't matter, but you have to have two data points uh, at least. Right. PCR tells you the sentiment, but again, don't go by PCR alone. Always look at option chain. That's the right thing to do. Uh, and here's my one last point. Even if you're an investor or some futures trader, if you're not even an option trader, right? You always should look at option chain data before taking a trade. Why? Because option chain trade, uh, option chain data is telling you what the big guys out there are doing. So my problem is if you know who the big guys are, right? you would want to take their side of the bet, right? So if you look at Nifty <coughs> option chain right now, you can see so many big guys are shorting Nifty at 12,000, 12,100, 12,200 and the probability that Nifty will go up in the next, let's say, two days of expiry, right? Till this Thursday is fairly, fairly low. It is definitely not going to cross 12,200 for all you know because there is so much of open interest at 12,200 and the chances that it might break 11,900 is also fairly low. It's higher than the probability of breaking the top side because the downside risk is heavy here because the OI on downside is very low and OI on top side is very high. But largely, even if you're a person who wants to invest in Nifty or buy a Nifty future, even if you're not trading option, this single image tells you that boss, upar jane ka chance is very low. To go up, the chance is very low. And niche jane ka chance is reasonably high i mean not as high as top side but this tells you that going up is a low probability at least in the next two days right so this is very very valuable information for a trader to know that look everybody is selling nifty for the next two days let me not go and jump into a long nifty position at around these levels of 12,000, 12,100, etc right now uh, if it's coming to 11900, I'll probably buy because there are others supporting me there. But at this zone, this is a resistance. This is useful information, right? Similarly, any stock you look at. So let's just look at Tata Steel, right? Just one stock because I'm kind of interested in that stock. So look at this. If I find Tata Steel near 460, I'll really look at option chain again. So yesterday or day before or three days back, if you were probably going to invest in Tata Steel at 460 levels, right? If you'd seen this option chain, you would not have invested in Tata Steel simply because with so many people buying this stock, the probability that this stock went will go up was fairly low. And that's exactly what played out. The stock went down all the way to 4, 430. And now there is some support at 400, 410, 420, etc. But if you knew 3-4 days back, 460 pay so many people are selling calls, you wouldn't have bought the stock. So even to make an investment decision, to trade a future or to trade some option, always, always look at the option chain before you take the trade. All right. So that 
brings us to the close of today's webinar i hope that you had some meaningful insights into how to look at the markets using option chain from this webinar if you like this video you can see many more videos by us on zerodas channel and our own channel our channel's uh, name uh, on youtube is be sensible please go there uh, hit that subscribe red button and then ring that bell every time we publish a video you will uh, get a notification from us saying that we have published a video all our education initiatives are free so please 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 do attend our um, webinars uh, hopefully there's a lot of information in there which will help you make some money great so that uh, brings us to the close of this one we hope you have a good trading day today uh, thank you so much for joining us bye